do like Mitten Squad, but wish there was some place to talk about it besides the dreadful YouTube comment section. Well, now there is. Introducing the Mitten Squad Discord server, your number one source for, for, um, uh, for stuff, I guess. Check it out today, or don't. Your call. There are weapons in Fallout 3. Big weapons, small weapons, good weapons, and bad weapons. But what about no weapons at all? Can you beat Fallout 3 with only your fists? Coming up with names that aren't horrendously stupid is getting harder and harder. I was gonna name myself Fisto, but I decided to play as a woman for an added challenge. Because it's been proven by medical science that women do not have hands. So I went with Fistonia, and let me tell you, Fistonia is very... not... Good god, she's hideous. After a fun childbirth, it was time for special. 9 in strength to hit hard, 8 in endurance to be able to take a punch from a bullet, 9 in intelligence to level up quickly, 7 in agility because Fistonia's sexual prowess must be accurately represented, ignore the fact that she's currently a baby, and 5 in luck. After thanking all the guests for coming to my birthday party and playing Drop the Glass, I hopped up on the table because I wanted to touch the pretty helium sacks. Then I got stuck on the table. I resolved the issue by sitting down and then went down to the basement to kill me a bug. I know what you're thinking, you have to use the BB gun. That's true, except for the part where it's not true at all. You can use vats to stomp on the roach. Then when you somehow fuck up something as simple as stepping on a bug, you can just punch it. New problem, you're trapped in bug world. There's an invisible wall. I thought this was the all is lost in space moment. Luckily, Daddy-O gets close enough that you can use vats to teleport yourself back to reality. Then it was time to take the goat. I wanted to take it, really I did, but Mr. Brotch took a bit of a stumble down the stairs. So I saved us both some time by choosing my own skills. I went with medicine, speech, and unarmed. The vault escape was about what you'd expect. The guards were the toughest people in the vault, but even they couldn't stand up to Fistonia because she hits like a hippo with Down syndrome and has a personality like a piece of plywood. Out of the vault, I sold most of the weapons and ammo I collected to Crazy Wolfgang, entered Megaton, snuck into Moriarty's saloon, hacked into his terminal, did a sweet jump off a roof that broke both my legs, and was off to Galaxy News Radio. On the way to GNR, I stopped by Super Duper Ultra Mega Mart to see what sort of exciting pharmaceutical items they had in stock. I killed a lot of raiders, went outside, tried to cave in Brian Wilk's head, but remembered that I don't have the Murder Children mod installed, pretended to be Michael Vick, returned to Moira Brown to sell a bunch of shit, entered the subway system, and fought ghouls for the first time. The roamers are a force to be reckoned with, but the normal ferals are a pushover. The super mutants are pretty tough too. I killed two more super mutants and encountered Zara Lyons of Cat Club and robbed the corpse of her dead friend. We fought our way through a ruined building full of super mutants in which they stole a lot of my kills. Then came the big one, the super mutant behemoth. Without a fat man, feline fanatics did their best to topple the giant, but as usual, it fell on me to slay the beast. The behemoth was no match for the freak with five fingers. Then I spoke to Three Dog, predictably failed a speech check, and was headed to the Washington Monument for the first time ever. I passed through another tunnel system, killed more ghouls, waltzed into a minefield where raiders and ghouls were battling it out, only set off a few mines, killed the raiders, ran around looking for a bed, found one, slept, returned to the tunnels, and finally made it outside, where a lot of super mutants were waiting to take advantage of a beautiful girl like myself. One on one, the mutants are mostly just a nuisance, but with several shooting me from all directions, it's what I call a sticky situation. What's even stickier is that they can run backwards faster than I can run forwards, making unarmed attacks especially annoying to land. The Super Mutant Master was easily the toughest foe so far. I went back to Megaton to buy more stim packs, then returned to the mall to enter the museum of man-made bullshit and lies that are blasphemous because God is the answer to all questions. What do you want for dinner? God. Your son isn't breathing on his own and will be in a vegetative state for the rest of his life. Should we take him off life support? God. Inside the M-O-M-M-B-A-L-T-A-B-B-G-I-T-T-A-Q, I killed several more super mutants, rescued the virgin dish, and went back outside towards the monument. There were two paladins guarding the gate, so I lured a bunch of super mutants over and let the two groups duke it out. The super mutants won by a landslide. It wasn't even a contest. Then I installed the dish, tried to throw a bottle out the window, but discovered that the windows are fake and don't exist at all. 
Back at GNR, Three Dog gave me the information I needed, and I was off to Rivet City. But before that, I bought more stim packs from Dr. Dickless in Megaton. I stayed along the river as I marched towards Rivet City. And then I saw her, Grandma Sparkles. I damn near took her head off, looted her corpse, stole from her fridge, raided her shack, and the curse of Grandma Sparkle strikes again. The game crashed when I left her shack. After I passed by a bridge, I upped the difficulty to normal because the raiders were too easy to kill. Then I discovered the Citadel, the Jefferson Memorial, did a sweet jump onto the swinging bridge to Rivet City, talked to Dr. Madison Lee, bought some combat armor, and went to the Jefferson Memorial to search for clues about where Dad could have gone. Inside the memorial, I found something that really pissed me off, far more than it should have. Unless I'm dumber than a gum wrapper, you can't attack a turret, or at least this particular turret, with your fists. I even managed to bop it and get it to move back and forth, but it wouldn't take any damage. So lame. Once I listened to the hollow tape left by Dad, I left the memorial, realized that Jesus might have been a super mutant, and continued power walking towards Smith Casey's garage. Not much happened on the way out there, aside from killing Lucky Harith and his cow. I entered Vault 112, and by this point, Tranquility Lane is a bore. The patriotic heroes arrive to save the day. I either killed or knocked out Dad, not sure which because the game wasn't sure either. I would left, told Dad I'd meet him in Rivet City, met him at Rivet City, went to clear out the mutants at the Jefferson Memorial, and let the slugfest begin. The normal super mutants didn't put up much of a fight, and that turret from earlier is gone, so that's cool. The brutes had a little more fight in them, but not much. After it was safe, I informed the nerds, they entered the building, and I was sent down to the basement, where I belong. Fuses and other stuff, nobody cares. I did briefly experiment with maneuvering around an area without turning the camera, because people have been suggesting that for a while. The Enclave arrived, and I absolutely did not glitch through a fence to kill the first soldier I saw. They were surprising, actually, not very difficult at all. Dad went to the big purifier in the sky, and it was up to me to escort Dr. Lee and her band of idiots to safety. The first large group of Enclave I found in the tunnels managed to kill me. I killed a lot of them, but there were two left, out of reach. I did some expert level jumps and got to the top of this metal barrel thing. Then I jumped up onto the platform and sent the soldiers flying over the edge. There's also a ladder you can open that goes nowhere and does nothing. You can also close it, but that too does nothing. While I was playing with the ladder, Dr. Lee somehow managed to follow me up there. I hit her, and she did this. Maybe it's just me, but I find that creepy for some reason. Still atop the platform, I found a door for midgets that led me to more Enclave soldiers who were waiting to ambush me and the scientists that I wished were dead. I pushed onward, exited the tunnels, and arrived at the Citadel. These are my skills at the moment because I haven't shown them in a while. Also, if you've watched my other Fallout 3 videos, you may have noticed that there were perks in the game that came from mods. I disabled all those mods for this playthrough. The perks and skills are all vanilla pudding. In the Citadel, I got an earful from King Baldy about my deadbeat father, figured out which vault had a gek, was a righteous cunt to scribe Jameson, got the location of Vault 87, and went to buy some supplies from Knight Captain Durga. Just as I was a cunt to Jameson, Durga was a cunt to me. But unlike Jameson, I'm not scripted to initiate combat unless I'm attacked. Words hurt, and Durga will learn the hard way. I vatched my way inside for a loser and beat her to death with my own hands. I then stole a lot of the stuff from the Brotherhood's armory. I also assumed that Durga had a key to open the cell door, but she does not, and that's very unfortunate. It means I'm pretty much stuck. This is what we in the business like to call fucking up big time, or soft lock. So, I'm stuck in the cell. What are my options? Well, I have none. I refused to let Durga live, so I couldn't reload a previous save. I had hoped to avoid doing this, but the only thing I could do was glitch myself through the cell door or the fence by rapidly quick saving and quick loading. It took about 5 minutes to leave for Loser. That might not sound like a lot, but I was pressing plus and minus several times a second for almost the entire time. My poor fingers. By the time those 5 minutes were up, my fingers felt like the fingers of someone who had just spent 5 minutes rapidly pressing two keys on a keyboard. But none of that matters anymore, because I'm finally free. Next stop, Little Lamplight. It really is the place to be. Think about it. You can beat all the children you want, and they don't feel a thing. Sure, you aren't actually hitting them, but let me have this, dammit. 
On the way to Little Lamplight, I got into a lengthy encounter with a group of Enclave soldiers. Once again, the multiple enemies attacking at once proved to be annoying, but it was all worth it because this was so satisfying. Some minutes later, I ran into a wanderer who got fucked up by giant flies before running off. See, I always knew Mel Gibson was a pussy. When I arrived at Little Lamplight, McDanleys wouldn't let me in. I could have glitched through the wall or spent 30 minutes reloading saves until I passed the speech check, but I really didn't feel like doing that. Instead, I chose to go rescue his friends from the slavers who'd taken them. I'm sure they were just playing board games or something. Not doing anything strange that would make Satan go, dude, what the fuck. At Paradise Falls, I killed the greeters and made my way inside. Did you see what I did there? It was a very subtle joke. See, I said they were playing board games. Board games usually have dice. The name of this place is Paradise Falls. Get it yet? Paradise Falls? A pair of dice falls onto the board in some board games. Paradise sounds like pair of dice. Now you know what, just fuck it, forget it. I killed a group of slavers inside the healing hut, and one of the slavers blew my mind. He pulled a me, can you believe it? He kept entering and exiting the healing hut like I did in my Fall at New Vegas companion video. What a twist. Before I freed the children, I fought the great, nameless one. With the children free to be taken by new slavers, I went back to Little Lamplight to be covered in the th- You know what? Let's not go there. My adventures in Vault 87 proved to be more fun than usual. Never before have I been able to deal significant damage to the super mutants while also being able to take some damage. It was liberating. Some time ago, I bought an advanced radiation suit, which meant I had no reason to release Fox. I got his hopes up by talking to him, then I let him know that I'd be leaving him in there forever. The Gek was easy to get thanks to the radiation suit. Then the Enclave ambushed me, I refused to give up the code, and I killed the officer who was rude to me. And when I say killed, I mean killed. I launched that fucker three feet off the ground and took his leg off with my fist. I made my way through the Enclave base, snagged the FEV vial, wandered around some more, escaped the base, and returned to the Citadel. Queen of Pussy Patrol actually thought I'd want some of her stupid armor. Nah, I can just buy my own. Oh, that's right, I killed Durga. Despite this setback, I'd kill her again if I could. From there, I waddled behind Liberty Prime for a while, until he entered his angsty teenage phase, where he hated everyone and wouldn't do anything anyone wanted him to, even if it would benefit him. So I pushed onward and walked around the big blue fence, entered the memorial, killed the Enclave soldiers guarding the rotunda, and confronted Augustus Autumn, king of the Palace of Auburn Hills. He died real good, but everything has to be needlessly complicated, mostly due to my own stupid decisions. Several playthroughs ago, I encountered this problem, where Augustus Autumn was dead, but Sarah Lyons wouldn't enter the room. Rather than trying a bunch of useless bullshit, I exited the game, reloaded a save, and she showed up. That didn't fix the problem though, because why would it? She's there, but Dr. Lee wouldn't let us be one of her lifelines. So I'm stuck again, and again, not many options. I opted for the brute force method, where I glitch myself inside the purifier, enter the code, and beat Fallout 3 with only my fists. I know what you're thinking. No, no I don't. And that's gonna do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout 3 with only your fists. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at MittenSquad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.